Since the dawn of Photoshop, cropping individual layers has always been a huge pain in the butt, especially if you're a beginner because there's so many specific steps involved. However, with some new changes to the frame tool, we have a lot more flexibility as you'll see here. But to fully appreciate these changes, we need to first understand the other ways of doing things. The first method would be to use a selection and a layer mask to crop a layer. Let's say, for example, I want to have this photo layer appear within the circle. Well, what I could do is just hold command or control, click on the thumbnail of the circle to select the visible pixels there, and then click back on the photo layer and add a layer mask. This works is good enough for a lot of basic shapes, but you do need something to base your selection from, or you're going to be creating a selection from scratch. You then have to remember how to use layer masks, how those operate, and also remember that there's a little link icon so you can separate your photo from your mask and move those things around separately. Yes, it's relatively straightforward once you get the hang of it, but if you're a beginner, that's a lot of steps and you're probably like, oh my god, Photoshop kind of sucks. So that brings us into our second option, which would be using a clipping mask, which is generally a little bit easier, except if you run into some hiccups, as you'll see here. Back at the starting example, let's say that we want to use a clipping mask to place this photo within our underlying ellipse, which is just an outline. In this case, I can just right click on the photo layer while it's right above the shape layer that I want it to appear inside of and go to create clipping mask. But in this case, what is going on? It's not exactly looking as we hoped for. Well, even though a clipping mask is relatively simple, there's a few caveats that must be fulfilled for this to work, such as our shape must have a fill color. So I would go and change a fill color. So now we can see the inside of that photo. And if I wanted to actually see the stroke around the image as well, I'd want to change the stroke positioning to be on the outside. So then that way, the entirety of the colored stroke is not being covered by the image and I can still see that outline as I wanted. Again, these steps are relatively simple, but there is a lot of things to get hung up on and it can get really frustrating really quickly. So with these updates in the frame tool, all of this becomes a lot easier, especially for beginners, and it might even speed up your workflow if you're more advanced in Photoshop as well. Now the frame tool basically does everything that we just mentioned, except we can just drag and drop things into place and there's a lot less confusion. So we can access the frame tool by pressing K. Now up in the options bar here, we used to only have two different options to either crop as a rectangle or as a circle. But now we have additional options, including custom shapes, which I'll explain more about later on. We also have the ability to add strokes as well, which are the outlines around a frame, but there are some downsides to it in particular being that they are destructive. So I'm going to show you a workaround later that will fix this problem for us. But at the most basic level, just to keep things simple and related to the last example, if we selected the circular crop, I could now just just go and click and drag out, hold the shift key to create a perfect circle and then let go. And it automatically crops that photo for me. Now, all I would need to do is click on the photo within the layers panel, grab the move tool and I can move it around as I would like. And it is way less step intensive than the other methods. Plus with the ability to use custom shapes, we can unlock a lot more potential with this tool as well. In this example over here, I've created a custom shape of a coffee bean. So let's say I wanted to place a photo inside of this. If you're just doing this as a one-off project, it wouldn't be that hard to do because we could use a clipping mask. But as you saw before, there could be some things that throw you off along that process. However, if we were to save this as a custom shape, we could then save this as a reusable drag and drop template for cropping layers in the future. Now, creating custom shapes like this is outside of the scope of this tutorial, but definitely worthwhile if you're wanting to get more from the frame tool. I'll leave some resources below about creating shapes and creating more advanced shapes in the description below for you to watch after this video. But in this case, I've already saved this shape by going to edit and then down to define custom shape. So that means if I were to go back into another project, let's say this one here, I could access my frame tool by pressing K, choose the custom shape option, and then go and choose that saved shape that I had here. I'll leave the stroke to transparent and I'll just click and drag out to create my frame. Since it automatically just added the photo that it was covering, which was the background into the frame, I can just hold alt or option and drag on that image to place it back outside of that frame. But now I'll just click back on that image and then find a new photo on my computer to place within. 
dragging and dropping a photo from my computer directly onto the canvas here, it automatically is placed within that frame, the image is cropped, and my life is really easy. I don't have to do any additional steps. Again, grabbing the move tool just to go and move this around as I would like. Now what's great about these new features in particular with the custom shape frames is that we have way more flexibility in the ways that we can crop individual layers as well as the ease of placing multiple images just really quickly dragging and dropping them into to an existing frame. If you were just kind of brainstorming an idea, using these custom frames would make your life way easier because you can just start throwing images together and see what works. But one major downside to this tool, as I mentioned before, is the fact that our stroke settings are destructive. So that means that whatever stroke settings you choose at the time of creating a frame are basically permanent. You're not going to be able to change them as you would a regular shape layer. So you might go ahead and think, well, I could just go and use a layer style. But the problem is if we go and add a layer style, double clicking on that particular frame layer and let's say adding a stroke, there's no actual stroke added to the frame. And that's because when we apply layer styles, they are being applied to the image and not the frame. So if I were to move this image within the frame over, we could then see that we have a slight stroke. Let me just go and adjust this stroke to be a bit bigger and adjust the color of this stroke so we can see it a bit better here. But as you can see now, the stroke is applied to the outer edge of the photo and not the frame. So the workaround to this is to convert our frames into a smart object so that we can non-destructively add additional effects to our cropped layers. So undoing that, I'll hold the shift key and just click on both of the thumbnails here, the frame and the image, and then I'll right click on the layer and go to convert to smart object. Now Photoshop will see where the edges of our frame were, which means I can now go and add any layer styles to the outer edge of that frame without having to worry about it only being applied to the inner image. This also applies to any other layer style that we're adding into our photo. Then if we ever want to edit the contents of that frame, we just need to double click on the thumbnail of the smart object and then within the new tab that appears, we can go and edit our frame or the image within it to then save back to our original project. So with these changes to the frame tool, I've ultimately been finding myself using these tools a lot more for cropping individual layers rather than having to mess around with selections and clipping masks over and over again. Makes the layer stack just a little bit more neat and for me, I can find it a little bit easier, especially if I'm experimenting with just adding new images as part of a template or something like that. But I'd be curious to know what you think of these new changes. Do you think that it's gonna change how you work in Photoshop, why or why not? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're there, make sure to grab a free copy of today's lesson cheat sheet, breaking down everything you need to know to use the frame tool and all of its new settings inside of Photoshop. Again, it's in the description or pinned comment down below totally for free. So make sure to grab a copy of that. So you remember all these steps going forward. Anyways, that is all for this video and I'll see you in the next one.